Okay, four Wednesdays in a row, change your life. How many things can you say that about? It's all master. All right, next up we have someone who's not a first timer. You may recognize her. She's a favorite, Miss Meredith Meslick. year college roommate. She was Mormon and this was her first time outside of Salt Lake City and the first time she was around any non-Mormons was the day she stepped foot onto our college campus, a very leftist, feminist, liberal arts college in upstate New York. And at first I wondered what I had said in my housing profile that made <laughs> friends think that I would be a match for this unenlightened, socially awkward woman. But after a few weeks, I realized that whatever the basis for their decision, they'd, they'd made a good match. Because I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't bring men back to the room to have sex with them. I didn't really do anything that offensive. Um, and I believed in harmony at all costs. I avoided conflict at every opportunity. And I felt bad for her. I tried to invite her to hang out with my friends, to, to include her, and I did not tell anybody about the fact that she did not wash her sheets, which were turning brown, <laughs> or her towel, which was starting to mildew. I mean, clearly, I was the best roommate she could have found. <laughs> Just after winter break, I walk into the room, and I find her sitting with our RA. She says, um, Meredith? Uh, we've been waiting for you. Um, could you sit down, please? Manola has asked me to mediate some issues that you're having. <laughs> issues? Mediation? <laughs> I'm the best roommate ever. <laughs> yes, but um, Manola finds some of the music that you play in the room offensive. <laughs> I looked at Manola, I was like, my music's not offensive, it's not even loud. She said, it's the Cheryl Crow CD. There's there's a swear word on it. I don't I don't like it. And all I could think to say was, no, there's not a Cheryl Crow. And she said, there's there's that song. And the RA says, it's um if it makes you happy, um it's uh there's there is a four letter word in it. There is. And I said I don't know any middle. So this is the H word, okay? I, I don't, it it's the H word, and and she says a lot. So I, I don't like it. H word? I don't, I don't know a swear word. <laughs> and he already looked at me and said, uh, hell? And Manola visibly flinched. And like, first of all, I don't really consider that a real swear word. Um, but even, even so, I still couldn't think of where it was in the song. And the RA said, you know, it's the chorus. If it makes you happy, then why the... H, are you so sad? And that's when I realized that Manola had no idea how good she had it with me as her roommate. And this is what she had to complain about. I mean, she could have had Morse, who could not have a conversation that didn't involve the word fuck. She could have had the other Meredith, who had a pet rabbit in the room that she smoked pot with every day. <laughs> brought random men home most nights to have sex, or the other Katie who kept her roommate up all night with hypochondriatic anxiety attacks. <laughs> but no, she had me, who, at great risk to my social life and personal safety, had asked Morris to use the word fuck less. And I sat with her and listened while she talked about the cute lacrosse players, and I pretended like she could have a chance with any of them. <laughs> and she found this to complain about, and in that moment I realized that I needed give her something to actually complain about. <laughs> so I started searching my mind for something to fight back with, and I landed on her favorite song, the song she listened to every night before she went to bed because it made her feel closer to home. And I, without really thinking about it, I heard myself say, well, I'm offended when you play Amazing Grace. <laughs> I said, I find the word um, wretch 
to be offensive um, because it uh, don't like the implied idea of the need for self-denigration to uh, get God's love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, furthermore, I also believe that everybody is, and then the RA jumped in, kind of seeing where this was going. She said, well, Nola, if you don't want Meredith to play Cheryl Crow, then I think you have to give up a song, too. <laughs> and Nola sort of stopped for a second and realized the position she'd gotten into. And so she begrudgingly said, fine, I won't play it anymore. And I looked at the RA and I said, no, is that just for this room or is it like nobody on the floor can play these songs? And she said, no, oh, no, no, Manola can only control what happens in this room. Which is really all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> mediation and about my rapidly forming plan. See, banning Amazing Grace was not going to be enough at this point. I needed retribution for all the months that I had walked on eggshells and bent over backwards for this woman. Within the hour, we received submissions from every woman on the floor for the Offend Manola mixtape. <laughs> this was a collection of the most graphic, sexually explicit, offensive songs that you could possibly find. We created the tape, we made copies for everybody, and we agreed that it would be played often and loudly when she was on the floor. And for a couple of weeks, this was our primary source of entertainment on the floor. When Manola would come home, someone would put the tape on, we'd all stand in the hall to watch her reaction as she heard the swear words and got the, lane, got the lyrics. And at first, it was really rewarding. She would be shocked and appalled, and she'd be sort of dis disgusted and wondering who we were and how we, and eventually she kind of got onto the game and she started to just ignore, pretend she didn't hear it. So it got kind of boring, but my need for revenge was nowhere near sated at that point. So I started looking for other ways to kind of mess around with her. Um, I told her that when Morris said, fuck you, which she often said, she meant, I love you. And so then Manola would respond with, I love you too. And so Morris would come back with a more violent, fuck you, and Manola would offer a hug. And Morris would come back more violent, and this would spiral until Manola was just kind of left in tears and wondering what's happening. And then I told people about the still unwashed sheets and, like, and towels. Uh, which were fully dark brown at this point, and the whole room smelled like mildew. And then I started to um, give tours uh, of her side <laughs> of the room, the towels and the religious paraphernalia and the sheets. And it was during one of these tours that Manola came home unexpectedly. And we sort of looked at each other, and we both recognized that I had definitely, you know, crossed a line. I had um, started to exploit my intimate roommate knowledge and for just a buck a piece. <laughs> I, I, I felt kind of bad, you know, and I wondered if I should stop. But the truth is, it had grown bigger than me. I mean, it was the, everyone's favorite pastime at this point to harass Manola. I couldn't have stopped it if I wanted to. So, the last couple weeks of school, we, we didn't really talk very much and we didn't make eye contact. And um, she learned to ignore the very graphic notes that were left on her message board, on her door. And we both learned to sleep through the drunken renditions of I, I Touch Myself that we saw in the hall most nights. And she, she made it through the year, and surprisingly, but she did not come back for the second year. And there are definitely times where I feel, I feel kind of guilty at the realization that I actually drove somebody out of school. But then, Inevitably, I'll hear that Cheryl Crow song, or really any Cheryl Crow song, and I'll just think, you know what, what the hell, because it sure did make me happy. <laughs>